Uh, I've been asked to introduce uh, these two friends by my knowledge, and uh, it makes it makes it a little bit hard, uh, I suppose. Um, I, uh, the, the way I I know each other doctors is through our collaboration. We did it together with Maria Pia in the project Damnation uh, Memoria for the uh, the roadblocks and in a collaboration with Hadi Sarkis concerning Pamantista. Now, for that matter, I think something, I mean, I, I hope that it becomes more than a year old. Is that they, they both remain true to the socialist federal republic of Yugoslavia. And for whatever it says about people, is their belief in human solidarity and rationality that is able to dispel any sort of either reactionary or irrational ideologies. And to that to extent, I mean, basically very close to my definition of eyes. It's either, you know, what uh, uh, it's either what, what you what you what you try to find, you know, when you hear the, the name art or culture for that matter, it's that which makes you, you know, find money in your wallet or, or really art that's something that signifies the roadblock, but really signifies and embodies the roadblock that we're in. And for that matter of course for this translation. And uh, I mean, because, yeah, perhaps there are very few artists that I have uncomfortable in, in, in introducing my own terms. Thank you for that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, hello. How are you? <laughs> are you okay? Okay, so we will try to, to, to talk about the project but also we will try to talk about us and we will try to talk about uh, a wider context of why we are doing what we are doing. Yeah? I mean, uh, Katerina and me, uh, we know each other for almost 20 years, uh, in the beginning very, very superficially, and in the last 12 years uh, we worked together very deeply and very intensively and last 10 years under the name of Shadowcasters. It's an it's a artistic and production platform based in Zagreb, but really worked in, in, in all over the Europe, in States, in, in, in Middle East, yeah, and uh, yeah. So, uh, the, project, uh, the project which is a part of uh, Through the Roadblocks is called uh, uh, Varosha, Famagusta Varosha Damnatio Memoria, yeah, and uh, so uh, it's inspired and dedicated uh, to the city of uh, Famagusta, and particularly to the part of this city which uh, somebody called Varosha, yeah. Uh, I mean, in in uh, Serbo creation Varos or Varosha is the city by itself, yeah? But as I, as somebody told me, uh, Varos or Varosha in a, these Turkish terms is a periphery of the city, yeah? It's, yes. the, it's the part of the city where the others are living, yeah? So, uh, as, you, as you know, I mean, uh, some of the hypertextual uh, uh, layers of this city is also given by Shakespeare, yeah? He, the Othello is invented or a real figure strangled her, his, um, his lover, this demona, probably among you are a lot of Othellos and a lot of this demonas and maybe some Iago also. Uh, but uh, uh, I, before, before, I mean, before we start talking, and I would really like to know who, to whom I am talking in that? Or, I mean, uh, because you, you know, uh, you can read about me a little bit. Uh, uh, Nicholas said a little bit about our work, you know. And what is generally uh, uh, what shadowcasters are doing is, uh, I will refer to something which is shifting the viewpoints. So 
all these days I was here, my viewpoints were all the time shifted. So after every single speech, I was provoked or annoyed or, or, or inspired, and I wanted to change this, what I'm going to speak now, and every single moment I wanted to change again and again and again. So there are different, different layers already given to what I would, I would say. But uh, I will tell you one, uh, one single uh, uh, stupid joke, which maybe ex uh, can um, very directly uh, define what, uh, um, what we are doing. In fact, you know, the God invited three important people to declare that he is going to finish with the world. Yeah? Uh, it's 2012, yeah, also. So it's, it's now, yeah? And it was, it was Putin, Obama, and Bill Gates, yeah? And uh, he told them that he's going to, to crash the world, that it's finished, yeah? And uh, so uh, Putin went to Moscow and he says to Russians that uh, he has two news, one is uh, two bad news for them. And uh, they ask uh, which one, and he said the first one, the God exists. Uh, uh, that's the first bad news, and the second one is he's going to, to, to finish with the world, yeah? Then uh, Obama, he went to the to, uh, States and he says, I have two news, one is good and the second one is bad. The, the first one uh, good is that the God exists, and the second one is that he's going to finish with us, with all the world. And then uh, 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 Bill Gates went to Microsoft and says, I have two fantastic news. The first one is one I am one of the three most important persons in the world. And the second one, we, we solved the operation system problem with, with Windows. So as you see, uh, it seems to be that we are finishing with the world and we were very pessimistic all these days about how we are going to finish this world because uh, uh, there, there were not many solutions of what, what really we are going to, to do or change. Yeah? But what, uh, what shadow casters somehow try to do is not to work with material, but more with immaterial things. And a lot of terms we are seeing, we are using in our works. Yeah? We are working a lot in the urban spaces. We are working with the hypertext matrix. And also, uh, we are trying to fall in love. To fall in love with something which I will called the narrative and the storytelling. There is old Albanian Muslim guy whom I'm uh, buying uh, sweets and corn and, and uh, uh, yeah, whom I'm buying the yeah, chestnuts since I'm very, very small. And he is always uh, quoting Quran. And he's always saying that uh, in Quran it's written one thing that the, the man is, when he, he or she, the, the humans are born, they are, they are taking the hands like this to grasp everything, yeah? But when they go away, it's like that. So we don't bring nothing with us when we are living, yeah? So we want to deal with this, this in between. <coughs> so I would like to ask you some things. I mean, because uh, I would like to know uh, how many of uh, Greek Cypriot people are here among you? Can you can you just show me Greek Cypriot people? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. And can you uh, can are there some Turkish Cypriot people here? No, no one. Okay. Uh, uh, so I would also like to know. Huh? You didn't ask whether there are any Cypriots here. No. Okay. Uh, Apart from Turkish. Okay, is there any Cypriot? Yeah. Okay. That's also how you ask the question. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much for dialogue on this question. So, uh, the city we have we were inspired, uh, we find out there is uh, six uh, or seven names of this city. Uh, uh, do anybody know these names? So, uh, are there some people here who are directly connected with Famagusta, uh, or born there, or or have relatives there, or were from there? Can two, okay, and uh, yes, and uh, you, of course. So, uh, I would also like because there are some people who are not from Cyprus and do 
do you know, uh, the people who are not from Cephas, do you know a little bit about the history of uh, Famagusta or things like uh, what happened in the last 30, 40 years? A little bit, yeah? So I would like you all just to try to think whatever you know about this while we are speaking about this project. So, uh, was somebody recently there? Well, it's inside the closed city. I don't Maybe think. even, yeah? Have you been there? I don't think I would be allowed to go there. Because Srečko was there the other day and he said there were no guards, so he was also thinking to go inside. But He should have tried what? it. <laughs> yeah, I was there three days, four days ago. Four days ago. Inside or outside? No, there were two children outside. <laughs> <laughs> A large wall with rays of and I ask you to use the microphone all when, when you speak so everybody can hear because I don't hear very well here. That was a no. I didn't go inside. They are took photographs. It was a prohibited zone with a red prohibited zone. It went for about four kilometers and I met um, about three German shepherds. But no, absolutely. It was just um, the cave area with a lot of small. If that's what you're talking about, then yes. it's fine. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, uh, uh, what we did uh, dedicated to Famagusta is a part of a larger project called Recollecting City, Recollecting Time. The project starts in, in 2006, and it's some kind of political and activist platform. And uh, I proposed this project to Katarina and Sechko Horvat, and then we elaborate this with a lot of other artists. And at the moment, this project is still going on, but we and nobody of us still um, have any more to do with these more younger artists are involved in that. So you can see this project as some kind of uh, activist or anti capitalist art project. Uh, and it, you will see from, from what, uh, what we are saying that some of the strategies of archivists or anti-capitalist projects can be developed because there is some money involved. And because your project has to show to the donors that you are doing something as display. So I'm very ironic on what we are doing. The main idea of the project was to reappropriate in a very focused and very systematic way of public and shared urban spaces by reading, discovering, unveiling hypertextual metrics of these spaces and giving back this as a tool or knowledge to the wide audience. So we focused on the two main aspects of, of uh, usage of this space, and uh, usage of this space in a very temporary manner. Political usage of these spaces, and artistic. So when I'm uh, talking about political uh, usage of these spaces, I am um, talking about uh, protests, marches, including also temporary occupation of the spaces, assassinations, diversions, political prosecutions like ghettoization of certain spaces, and also uh, uh, when I'm talking about political uh, usage of the spaces, it's like uh, secret meetings of some uh, political parties or, or political groups like uh, Brigade Rosse, Red Army Fraction, or direct action groups, or some groups which are between art and politics or sometimes the left or communist parties like uh, which were legal or outlaw like I think also here in Cyprus yeah on the other hand when when I'm speaking about art and I'm I really mean art I'm not talking about entertainment I mean sophisticated and focused art pieces which are inspired by space by sight and by its inherited uh, choreography economy and also hypertextual metrics and layers, or at least some layers of chosen space or site. 
So uh, to detect all this, we, we made a very wide research, a lot of archives, a lot of archives, uh, public archives, private archives, but uh, uh, most of what, uh, 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 the, what we were also interested in were testimonies. So we talked with a lot of people, especially artists and, and also a lot of political figures. Because also we wanted to see how this usage of public space is then reflected uh, in further development of the public space. So do architects and urbanists consider this temporary usage of these spaces as important or is it some kind of uh, 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 non-conscious which is shaping this? So if the artist or politic is using the space because it's specific shape or specific site or specific way of, 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 uh, of uh, uh, um, this, this space is. I mean, you know that, that uh, a lot of urbanists in 19th uh, and, and 20th century were uh, planning these cities to stop different political movements in the cities, like Wisman did in Paris, yeah? So the, the streets were made wide, so nobody can block them anymore, you know? and make some kind of uh, occupation of the city. This is one of the examples, but we can go more and more in this, yeah? Uh, so, uh, the main uh, problem of, of this project was uh, that this research, this dialogue we, we had with all these people was invisible. <coughs> and uh, so we, we needed somehow some kind of uh, performance. We needed some kind of display where we will show to our donors, which was not private donors, not banks, which were like, let's say, Art Council of Zagreb, yeah? Or Ministry of Culture, yeah? So uh, how to show them that we are doing something in between some exhibition or some, some let's say, publication or something like that? So we invented different tools. One was open offices, where we were showing what we, we uh, uh, made, and then we talked further. And then it was also attract, attractive, attract, attractors, some kind of attractors and communication tool. And the second one, uh, so we had uh, different different uh, 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 of these kind of open offices in the city of Zagreb, and we made workshops also. And then we made this uh, uh, symposium, which I will also run. And then one day, when I, while I was walking through the city, I saw these displays. They were empty. They were for the posters of Croatian Cinematheque. They were uh, the Croatian Cinematheque uh, cinema was given by the right-wing government of Tujman to the Catholic Church. So this cinema is now cabaret because you know the Catholics like uh, uh, cabarets and it's a very famous <laughs> cafe in the front, yeah? So, uh, but it's not anymore the display of the Croatian film archive. You know, film archive doesn't have anymore the cinema to show their films. So, it's for this, these displays were empty, so we, we, found, uh, uh, we found out who was the owner. It was one film company and we signed a contract with them, so we got this and it's now the permanent archive of the city for the last six years we are showing what we are doing so uh, that's it we, we made a lot of uh, editions i think it was 14 editions till now and uh, it's also some of them uh, 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 the first edition in fact the editor of first edition one of the two editors was Rechko Horvat it was uh, uh, inspired by, by political usage of the space and then it was different different other editions which which uh, was in, uh, connected more with art or with different other usage of the space. I'm just showing you uh, how it looks and it's now we are we are also getting some more. We are building new displays and putting them in, in around the city. Yeah, this is the one of the last one. Uh, this is inspired by, by a rate of uh, um, uh, crime in different zones of Zagreb uh, and uh, according to the weather report. 
so uh, the citizens can also get uh, some kind of prediction of uh, which kind of crime will happen in their neighborhood <laughs> according to the weather report today. Yeah. So this is the last one which is now in the street of Zagreb and the next one is dedicated to self-service workers restaurant restaurants which completely disappeared in our beautiful capital of Zagreb because we are now capitalist country so we don't need self-service restaurants for, for, for workers. And yeah, and now we are coming to the edition of Parosha Famagusta, and I'm letting Katarina to tell you more about it. Um, thank you, boys. And uh, I definitely have to mention at the beginning that uh, this edition would not really exist without uh, Nicholas Veteras and Maria Kiriakou, who were our collaborators uh, and the organization of Mother One Up. Uh, Nicholas and Maria did not only provide uh, the documentary material that was used in this edition, but they also provided a lot of uh, very inspiring talks and debates that we had in order to be able to somehow capture the, um, uh, the narrative, but also the different layers of this really, really unique, I would say, story of Hanukkah. Unique on one hand, and uh, similar to many other stories that they actually try to play with two media. One is the very arcade media of wall newspaper, a very two-dimensional a kind of uh, information board. And on the other hand, with, the, with hypertext, with the idea of creating different kinds of uh, small portals or small links that uh, in this display would lead you to eventual uh, uh, examination of those different themes. And also uh, hypertext in the sense of um, moving through the city and uh, following those seven displays. Uh, none, of the, um, none of the additions uh, was um, created in any kind of chronological order, um, simply because we wanted to allow people to follow their own path and then create the narrative in that way. So we never wanted really anyone to so go from point one to point two. So. But there were some editions in which they were, there were such links, where there would be one, maybe small element, that would be sort of chronologically placed uh, in the context. I'm still talking still about methodology, I'm coming back to motivation. Two years ago, uh, we came, uh, by the time the invitation of uh, Snechko and uh, Helena and Yanis, to the first conference uh, on the, of the project on the Roblox. We were very open to whatever we would meet and find here as uh, theme, subject, uh, problematics, and first people. Uh, and we were very pleasantly surprised with the wonderful group of people that we met here, uh, an international group. But one thing actually uh, came up as a real surprise. And that was the fact that practically all of our newly uh, found uh, Cypriot friends were in one way or another connected to Famagusta. Uh, we didn't have Famagusta anywhere in our minds when we were coming here. Sorry to say that, but it's simply something which happened already a long time ago. Boys and I belong to the generation who still has a memory of, of that uh, tragic event, of the invasion um, of the Northern Cyprus, but you know how many things happen on a daily basis. <coughs> and in the meantime, we've had a war in our own country, which became in other countries, so there was a lot of discontinuity that piled up in the meantime to really think actively about it. But through these encounters, all of a sudden, Famagusta became a very present and a very live story. And another surprise that actually came to us was the fact that uh, people were telling us that somehow this memory of Famagusta is very much suppressed. And that there is a kind of suspended life being lived uh, by those who still survive uh, the, the exodus, so the, the original 26,000 people or even more, and of course the generations that come afterwards. And uh, for us this was a reason enough to try and deal with this story, first of all for ourselves to learn more about it, to delve into the history not only of Hamagusta but of Cyprus, and uh, of course to connect this story of huge discontinuity with the story of discontinuity that we live in, in our own surroundings, in the countries that are being called now everything, ex-Yugoslavia, former Yugoslavia, 
now there is uh, there is a new term for all the countries. It's called the region. For its site, maybe it's becoming more and more simple. A uh, Yugo sphere, I think, is abandoned at the moment. Um, but the region is somehow I find the most simple really of all. Uh, it's almost like Varosha, you know, the term Varosha, which is on the one hand center, on the other hand periphery, and so on. Anyway, um, so that's why we decided actually to inhabit the seven points in the city of Zagreb uh, with, the, with, the, with the entrance into the story, into the story of Um uh, I will explain shortly the concept. So you, you see that the subtitle is the natural memoria. It's, uh, it's a Latin uh, uh, term, it's a Latin syntax, and it means the nation of memory. It's quite easy to translate in English. Um, usually, for those who know the term at all, they uh, connect it to Roman legal uh, practice. Uh, and there is even a talk that there was uh, legislation that was trying to regulate uh, the rules of remembering and forgetting. But actually, this is not true. So that's already one one way. It's, it's true up to, up to an extent, but there was no really, uh, there was no really legislation. The term was coined then. Well, it's like, it's developed in this essay. Anyway, there is an essay called the Nazi Memoria, which is a kind of red thread to uh, each of the seven displays. And it's, uh, it would be much easier if I would have a mic in my hand that I could then really show you. But in the upper le uh, left corner, there's, uh, in each display, there is a quotation from this essay. It was written by a um, linguist, uh, poet, and translator, classical linguist, uh, Sinan Vujovic, who by himself is a completely displaced person, being uh, half Muslim, uh, half Orthodox uh, from a region between Bosnia, uh, Montenegro, and Serbia, living for uh, half of life in Belgrade, half of life in Zagreb, and so on. So, um, so he's already a kind of uh, a person of this continuity who definitely has uh, a lot to say about uh, memory and for and forgetting. I'm sorry. So this uh, this uh, could be called a kind of meta line of the whole uh, of the whole edition. Um, discussing and debating about uh, the, the relation between Nene, memory, and letter uh, uh, oblivion. And actually a very, very thin connection that is being developed through the time. But there is one, uh, one very interesting connection actually which is told by Cicero. It's an anecdote, so it's not uh, uh, certainly uh, historical, but we presume it is. Uh, and the end of those that the the, German, uh, the, the, the Greek the Greek uh, poet Simonides, who was uh, the inventor of mnemotechnics. I don't know if you've heard about it, um, but the, the art of remembering, the method of remembering, offered to teach uh, this mnemotechnics uh, to the famous uh, Greek uh, politician at that time, Themistocles. And Themistocles replied. Uh, much more than learning the art of remembering, I would like to learn the art of forgetting. <laughs> uh, of course, this is all in creation, as you can see, and unfortunately, uh, we were not able at this time to bring uh, the edition here translated in English, and of course displayed in its uh, original size so that you could actually stand in front of it and read, which would be the best thing of all. So I would like to try just briefly to tell you. Um, what each what each display is. So they are um, they are divided in a thematic way, and again, as I said, there is no chronology in it. The, the so-called first display that I'm showing you is um, a named nominus nomen. It's dedicated to different names of Famagusta, as Boris asked you. Does anyone know those names? Well, there are about six or seven here. I have also included the names of Salamina <coughs> as the first settlement. Uh, near Famagusta, but Famagusta, Famagusta's names actually were Asinoi, uh, which was the name of uh, the queen of the Ptolemy, uh, uh, at the time of Pto Ptolemy Egypt, and then uh, Constanti Constantina, Constantinia, Constantia, 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 or Constantia, 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 okay. Um, and here you can also see, um, in a way, how those pictures, which are very small, 
or actually could be much bigger, of course, how, how these, uh, these pictures were chosen. And they were all in some kind of association, not usually, not, not necessarily illustration, but really association with, with what, uh, what the text was about. So in talking about Constantia, there is, uh, there is the, uh, the, the facsimile of, uh, of an invitation from the Hotel Constantia in Famagusta, and then the hotel itself when it's being uh, destroyed in the 1974 uh, bombing. Um, and then Famagusta, which means the fame of August, um, and um, the Turkish name, which today can be found uh, <coughs> everywhere, and it's the official name. First, it was Lagusa during the Turkish, uh, the Turkish epoch, and after 74, uh, what was added to it was Gazi Lagusa. And uh, um, I discovered that Lagusa in Turkish means moth, and Gazi means heroic. So actually, the name today of the city is Heroic Moth. There was, of course, the name that, that there is the name that, that's been used all along uh, the Greek, which is Amokostos, and the name means buried in sand. And of course, in that sense, Nomenes Tomen uh, tells a lot about the present, um, the present life or uh, afterlife of August, especially Varosha. Uh, the second display is called Persons, Legends, and Myths, uh, and continues with, of course, the quotation in the upper left, uh, upper left corner. Um, and here, this, uh, um, of course, I mean, you understand that this is a very personal account. It's not uh, an objective historical representation of Augusta. So the choice was also, also made in that way. Started with Delka, who was the, uh, the founder of uh, Salamina, uh, Saint Barnabas, um, and there was a mentioning. Actually, I'm just showing the big picture again. Uh, Nea Salamina and uh, Anorthosis. There's the two football clubs, uh, one founded by the left and the other founded by the nationalists. And Anortos is actually, and this is mentioned in the text, also has been trained uh, both by Croat and Serb uh, coaches, which we thought might be an interesting information for uh, the, uh, the Croatian audience, especially. So in each of those texts, there is some kind of, um, let's say, personal stance or, or a uh, small provocation. Perhaps this can be also considered as a provocation to have next to Otello uh, the governor of Famagusta, the present go governor of Famagusta, uh, uh, Beran Bertu, if I pronounce well, I don't know, uh, who is actually, I mean, we consider that this was important because she's the first uh, female secret, the first woman in Cyprus to hold this position in all of Cyprus. Um, and of course, uh, those of you who are from here only know about Marc Antonio Pagadin, the uh, Venetian who tried blindly to uh, fight against the Turks and was uh, afterwards, <laughs> when captured, uh, tortured terribly, only to become a saint, actually, kind of saint martyr in the history of Cyprus. And um, this is, this is uh, David Zain, who is a um, Turkish uh, Cypriot director who made the documentary together uh, with the Cypriot uh, director, Panikos Krizan uh, Zizatou, I think I pronounced well. Um, they made a documentary on a travel that they both took from one side to another and then meeting um, in a kind of symbolic way, uh, showing the separation between um, the northern Cyprus and the rest of the country. Uh, this um, third display is dedicated to uh, the, what we call the Masters of Famagusta. And Rule Britannia is actually somehow uh, pointed out, so it's that Rule Britannia and the other Masters of Famagusta, for the fact that this display, physically, in Zagreb, is on uh, the square of Britannia. It's called the British Square. So, in a way, this was also a kind of uh, connection between the two. And this is basically the historical, again, uh, some historical points of who were all the individuals and uh, the nations that were um, here, that were here present and inside this. I, I will just read you this very short um, account of the friar Giovanni Mariti, who traveled through Cyprus in 18th century, and he wrote, uh, it was 19, uh, 1750, and he wrote this about the people of Cyprus. 
is that Greek and Turkish are here usual languages. The Cypriots are usually well built, tall and handsome, somber and moderate. Women have uh, mostly kind eyes, but ugly traits, and very few of them are really beautiful. They live a long time, and they often remarry when they are already grandmothers. All Greeks love fun, but Cypriots love it to the point of exaggeration. Uh, Cypriot women love um, sweet, heavy uh, scents to be worn on their heads, and up to this day, they grotesquely uh, adorn their heads with flowers. When Christian ladies go out, they do it with great pomp uh, about their clothes, while the Turkish women are covered from head to toe by uh, cloth. So it's only one small example of how cliches are being built and all those kinds of general ideas about people, nations, countries, and so on. Um, so apart from mentioning different epochs uh, and different rules on Cyprus, um, uh, we also somehow pointed out a few moments that were, uh, that were, that were important uh, in the sense of um, in the sense of building some kind of intensity of um, um, ethnic uh, or ideological uh, uh, dynamics here on the island. And one, one of them was between 46 and 47 when there were thousands of Jewish people who were interned here in the, in the camps while trying to go out somewhere else. And uh, uh, one historical account says actually that uh, their camp was next uh, to the camp of German war prisoners, and that the conditions in the German war prisoner camp were much better. Um, then there is a mention of Elka, which um, played a huge role uh, in the modern history of Cyprus. Uh, the fourth display is called, uh, under quotation marks, Golden Age. Under quotation marks, um, simply or not so simply, because on the one hand, uh, marking the very brief period of uh, Cypriot independence as a whole country, so uh, the, the island being one entity, uh, and experiencing um, quite a significant economic development in many areas. At the same time, this was a, this was a period of huge trouble and uh, uh, different turmoil that is happening is, uh, mostly due to the game that the big players were playing with Cyprus, which actually somehow seems to be the fate of the island all along. Uh, so um, it starts with with the um, it's it's a it's a quite a political account of what happened when Macarius was elected after uh, Britain and. Uh, uh, France and the United States, uh, have, and of course Greek and Turkey, have given um, the, the right to Cyprus to be to be independent, uh, and it goes on with depicting the, the main actors of, uh, of this whole event and what Macarius did, and this is something that is part of, of the history, so you don't have to, uh, you don't have to, I don't have to re retell about it, but also mentioning. Uh, several points in which um, this term was actually led to the 74 uh, invasion, like the bloody, uh, bloody Christmas of 63. And then the fifth, um, uh, the fifth display being dedicated entirely to the 14th of August of 1974, and combining um, the, uh, the historical data, the documentary data, with um, uh, with the, the short excerpts here in italic from um, a, conf a kind of uh, account, a very personal account of, uh, of a man who was in front of us when he was, a, he was a child still and his memory of this day and of the days that were following being in the refugee camp and finally realizing that they would never come back although they thought they would come back in a few days time and so on. Uh, one thing that I didn't tell you actually, um, I realize now another uh, few rouge or red thread of all the editions is um, this part um, which is in the middle of the upper part, you see the, the, the train accident. 
these are all um, different accounts of moments of discontinuity that happened in Zagreb. So, uh, different uh, accidents or uh, of natural, of natural or of man uh, man-made uh, cause, um, and in this way somehow this discontinuity motive is being uh, uh, pulled through to, to the whole edition. Um, this display is called the City of Ghosts, and you see the photographs that probably you have seen on the internet of the present or the last 38 years of uh, Varosha being completely frozen in time, uh, surrounded with barbed wire fence, with all those uh, different different signs that are <coughs> always in the middle of each edition that you have seen. We have not designed them; they were all taken from photographs from different uh, signs around Varosha, uh, around Varosha. And here there are also some accounts of the people who went there and who witnessed what was happening, and also of some rare people who actually um, uh, managed to get into Russia and to see how it looks today, being frozen in time. Uh, the, last, the last display is a docu-fiction. It's a kind of coda. It's called Varosha 2014 on. And here we actually played with a little bit of uh, imagination and utopia combined with some facts. Um, the fact of 2003, the opening of um, the border between Turkish and Greek part of uh, um, Nicosia, the Kofi Annan plan of 2004, and then starting actually from the conference in 2010, we built a kind of narrative which gives a very important place both to the conference and to the and to, to the project that we were doing together with uh, Maria and uh, Nicholas, but of course placing it in the in the area of fiction, which already proved to be true uh, in this year because we planned for two, 2012 last year to have the project Memories of Deep Harbor dedicated to Pomerusta, which was supposed to be a performative uh, project in the form of one-on-one -on -one journeys to be actually produced and shown here during during the conference, but that, uh, as you see, that didn't happen, which doesn't mean that the suggestion cannot be passed somehow to another point in the future. And we went even further. Um, well, you cannot really read all of it. This was translated just to give an idea of it. But we went further up to the, to the year 2014, in which we envisioned that actually it would be possible to have a conference in from a booster. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so this is the mayor. This is the mayor of future from uh, uh, a It's yeah. Oscar Lima, a Brazilian architect, architect. Uh, who is now 103 years old. Uh, in our vision, actually, he was supposed to build the the, the, the center for uh, the future of togetherness. But we will see if this is going to happen. Okay. So thank you very much. Uh, different architects and urbanists 
uh, it's an international actually think tank, and they are they are being in the process of discussing uh, the future of Belarus, or the future of Belarus especially, because now at this point after 38 years, this whole um, uh, uh, this this whole let's say let's call it uh, it's, it was the elite part of uh, of Belarusia in the last uh, portion of uh, the history of the city before 74. Um, the hotels are four or five stars, uh, very much tourist condominiums and so on. And now, after 38 years of being completely uh, neglected, it's uh, most probable that it has to be torn down. People. So there is no chance of restoring anything uh, there. And, um, well, I, I don't have to speak about this. I mean, of course, of course, I mean, you, you hear not much more about why this was being done. What I know is that there was this idea of Turkish side to actually use Barosha as some kind of pawn in the negotiation game, but obviously it was a complete failure as a decision because nothing happened with it. And somehow the, the way the city remained there uh, in this suspended state is actually the feeling of a lot of people being in that suspended state. In the meantime, we did, uh, we did another project called Memory Map. <laughs> to talk about it. But, uh, I will only mention that in one part of the project we invited people from Tamarista to come and share their memories with us at the exhibition. And it turned out really that this is a subject that they don't share between them, most of them. They don't, they don't speak about it, they, they somehow keep it away. And then when it comes out, it's very painful and it's very, uh, very difficult to deal with. Just take a little bit away from Marusia, but you mentioned the, the, the Jewish camps. Do you have the detail about that? Because it was basically the Jews that came from Europe that the English brought here in Caracas to decide where they're going to take them. And the first plan was to make Cyprus Israel, basically, to make Cyprus their base, and then we decided to do it. Is that mentioned? Is, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, in detail. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Controversial. <laughs> but yes. there are so many, there are so many, you know, things that right. you know, details that are okay. impossible. Okay. Uh, so I just wanted to mention that, of course, that abandoned city and Varosha uh, or Varosh in Turkish actually means suburb. Uh, and it was the richest uh, element of it. It was the equivalent of Costa del Sol of the West uh, in, in the East. So it was a very rich area, and, uh, you know, money-making machine, if you like, in that area. Uh, one of the things um, that needs to be dispelled is not actually abandoned in such, uh, in, in, in that sense, it's been abandoned by civilians, but it's actually a militarized zone, and the military has, um, a whole number of hotels which they have developed in the last five years. They've taken over a number of the hotels in the middle and they're uh, running it as a, a sort of a holiday village. Sorry. Now I'm talking about the so-called abandoned Varosha, you know, the, the city which has been abandoned, which is uh, it's the militarized zone. I call it a militarized zone and they're making uh, quite a lot of business out of it because you have a whole number of offices, uh, sort of families who come for holidays there. Not only that, they now have created uh, these hotels that have been transformed into students' residence halls and they are fast in and out. So um, in terms of what you're going to be doing or what plans anybody has, for the um, sort of abandoned city of Russia, uh, that's a big uh, issue of uh, whether the military will be let out because it's con every year it's actually taking more and more of that space and putting it into um, you know its own use. I think uh, I, I don't know. This was not a question. Maybe some kind of comment. I ask you somebody. So you were there recently, so you know. But I would just say while we were doing this research, it was very interesting. On YouTube, you can really find amazing things. You know, really, you can see from different points of view. There is a beautiful, you know, BBC reportage of liberation of Cyprus with uh, uh, from Turkish uh, uh, army. You know, it's it's really like look like like invasion of Iraq 
for Afghanistan, of liberation of these dirty uh, Greek Cypriots who are torturing Turks. So you have really different points of view, you know? And, and, and I think it's, it's a really a question mark. How is it possible that this country is a European Union country and it's still, you know, uh, uh, nutrating this kind of, uh, 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 even now more growing uh, 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 difference and, and, and hatred in a way, or if you, if you want to say in another, uh, another way, not, uh, not wanting to touch anything. But I think it's also questioning what was say, uh, said today in a many, many other uh, 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 speeches. What is the future of the Europe? Is, is this, and I don't care. And I say, I don't care. I, if the Chinese has to take an over, or Indian has to take an over of the world, why not? Thank you very much, Boris and Katarina. Uh,